it's about time. What's going on? Yo, yo, yo. Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is the Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, the Oscars were last night. And, you know, it's a bit different right now with COVID restrictions. People were saying it kind of dragged on. And I saw a lot of chatter on social media about people being upset about Chadwick Boseman not winning. But let's talk about some of the people who were there last night. Regina King was the first presenter. And one of the first things she talked about was a Derek Chauvin trial. Listen to this. We are mourning the loss of so many, and I have to be honest, if things had gone differently this past week in Minneapolis, I might have traded in my heels for marching boots. Right. Now, I know that a lot of you people at home want to reach for your remote when you feel like Hollywood is preaching to you, but as a mother of a black son, I know the fear that so many live with, and no amount of fame or fortune changes that that's right i don't even know why people get upset when folks have those conversations on those platforms that's much uh more more substantive than going up there and just thanking a bunch of people we don't know more what all right substantive what i'm supposed to say that's not the right word definitely in sound sound so i think y'all know what i'm talking about yeah we got you Mm -hmm. and now tyler perry was honored with a humanitarian award and amongst the things that he was talking about is refusing hate and how his mom taught him that after he told the story about uh, helping a homeless woman. Listen to this. My mother taught me to refuse hate. And in this time, and with uh, all of the internet and social media and algorithms and everything that wants us to think a certain way, the 24-hour news cycle, it is my hope that all of us would teach our kids, and not only to remember, just refuse hate. Don't hate anybody. I, I refuse to hate someone because they are Mexican or because they are black or white or LBGTQ. I refuse to hate someone because they are a police officer. I refuse to hate someone because they are Asian. Mm. All right, and her also won Fight For You from the Judas and, and the Black Messiah soundtrack is the song that won for that for original song. By the way, I loved her outfit, but here is what her speech sounded like. Musicians, filmmakers, I believe we have an opportunity and a responsibility to tell the truth and to, to write history the way that it was and, and how it connects us um, to today. A knowledge is power, music is power, and as long as I'm standing, I'm always gonna fight for us, I'm always gonna fight for my people and fight for what's right, and I think that's what music does and that's what storytelling does. Okay, Oscar winner her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just about now, to drop Daniel- her debut album, which is so strange to me. Wait, That's she's dropping her crazy. debut. That's what they announced this weekend. She's dropping her debut album. I was like, debut. What was the first one? Maybe like a mixtape or <laughs> oh, no. EP or something. Like I don't they, know. They, they I don't know nowadays. I definitely don't look at her as dropping her debut album. She got a lot of songs I love. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, let's um Daniel Kaluuya for best supporting actor, and that is, of course, for Judas and the Black Messiah. And in his speech, he talked about Fred Hampton. To Chairman Fred Hampton, how blessed we are that we lived in a lifetime where he existed. Do you understand? Know he was on this earth for 21 years, 21 years, and he found a way to feed kids, educate kids, give free medical care against all the odds. He showed me, he taught me, him, Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, the Black Panther Party, they showed me how to love myself. And with that love, they overflowed it to the black community and, and to other communities. And they showed us that the power of union, power of unity, that when they play divide and conquer, we say unite and ascend. Thank you so much for showing me myself. Very well deserved award. He he deserved every bit of that award. You know, Definitely there was did. a moment that went viral where his mom looked a little bit taken aback, and here's what that moment was like. There's so much work to do, guys, and that's on everyone in this room. This ain't no single man job. That's some real. And I look to everyone, every single one of you. You got work to do. Do you understand? Know and I'm gonna get back to work Tuesday morning because tonight I'm going up. <laughs> We're going up. You know what I mean? We're enjoying ourselves tonight because we've got to celebrate. We've got to celebrate life, man. We're breathing, we're walking. It's incredible. Like, it's incredible. My mom met my dad. They had sex. It's amazing. Like, do you understand? I'm here. He's right. Her face was like, boy, if you don't stop. <laughs> he's right, though. His mom met his dad. They had sex, and now he's here. He's yeah, we know that's how we got here. Yeah, <laughs> All right, and Two Distant Strangers won an Oscar in the Best Live Action Short Film category, and that stars Joey Badass, and Trayvon Free is... um is the person who actually uh, wrote, did he write this or direct it? He wrote it. He wrote it, okay, mm-hmm. so Trayvon Free wrote it, and Diddy is one of the producers, Terrence J, Van Lathan, Kevin Durant, amongst other people, and um, here is what Trayvon Free had to say. 
On average, the police in America every day kill three people, which amounts to about a thousand people a year. And those people happen to disproportionately be black people. And, you know, James Baldwin once said, the most despicable thing a person can be is indifferent to other people's pain. And so I just ask that you please not be indifferent. Please don't be indifferent to our pain. I, I thought he gave a phenomenal acceptance speech, and I have no idea why nobody clapped after he said that, not even the black people. Maybe something was wrong on my TV, but I didn't hear any reaction to what he said, and I thought what he said was very, very accurate. And if you mm -hmm. were upset about what he said, then you haven't seen the movie Two Distant Strangers because it's a movie Did about yeah, police violence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a really good movie, and shout-out to Joey Bass. I didn't even really realize when I was watching it at first that that was him. I don't know how That's you That's how great of a... It. <laughs> At first, I was watching it and I was like, he looks so familiar because the way he was dressed and everything, yeah, it I, just didn't look like Joey Badass to me, which is a great thing. Yeah, salute to my guys, um, Van Lathan and Nick May. They were executive producers on that film. Uh, you know, I and watched Terrence I, J. Terrence J. Too. Well, I, I see, Jesse Williams, salute Kevin to, Durant. Yeah, salute to Terrence J. and Diddy and all them. But I've been watching Van and Nick and Trayvon get this going from the beginning, way before anybody else was involved. So I'm, I'm extremely proud of those three brothers in particular for being Oscar winners now. All right. Well, that is your front page news. I know we have more to talk about, but we'll get into it. All right. We got front page news next. What are we talking about? Yes. And let's talk about Derek Chauvin. Does anybody have any sympathy for him as a human being? We'll discuss. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.